Hello everybody and welcome back to the final extra of the No More Heroes walkthrough. It's time to have a look at those dastardly one-hit kill attacks and also the normal ending of the game because that's just glorious. <laughs> so, uh, to uh, fill out this part, let's have a little look at some of the cultural references found in No More Heroes. Uh, the first is Jean referencing the manga Muki in her uh, fast-forwarded story. Ah. Works quite well. Uh, Damn, the Spell Tiger resembles Canada's motorcycle from Akira. Uh, Orange 2, Death, Death Metal's Saber, has a symbol that parodies Apple Inc.'s logo. Uh, the Grasshopper logo can be found in several parts of Santa Destroy, mostly on the sides of newspaper dispensers and on billboards. Uh, the art and writing on the unlookable Fudo t-shirt references the cult martial arts documentary Budo, The Art of Killing. I believe I've already mentioned that Dr. Peace's weapon, the Golden Revolver, is a possible homage to Emir Park Reiner of, Gold of Killer Seven's Golden Gun, potentially. Also the fact that you have the James Bond, the man with the golden gun, which is important. Uh, Jean's history of sexual abuse and seeking prostitution as a means of paying for her training um, is possibly an homage to the 1974 cult film Thriller, A Cruel Picture. The entrance to the Townsend residence spares a very strong resemblance to Tony Montana's mansion in the 1980 film, 83 film Scarface. There's a button of Star Wars references, so the Beam Katana, death of a protagonist that's meant to be before his eyes, Thunder Ryu, character revealing himself to be the protagonist's father, Darkstar, masked bikers who bear a resemblance to Darth Vader, the TIE Fighter guys, uh, the credits, which you will see, which are just beautiful. There's also Sylvia telling Travis to trust his force, capitalised. Uh, the fact that you've got dark side mode. You have also got the fact that the Spell Tiger sometimes resembles an X-Wing. There is also the poster in Travis's room and at Beefhead that resembles the poster for Star Wars Episode 3, Render the Sith. This is Bad Girl's one-hit kill. It's terrifying. Also, you could see the cock up I made. I'm so, so depressed. Uh, the To Be Continued logo at the end of the real ending is a reference to Back to the Future because it's that font. Also, when Travis's closet is opened at the motel, uh, there's a white button-up button -up shirt with what appears to be red ink on the breast pocket. Uh, Basically, that may be a reference, and probably is, to the recurring joke in the 2004 film Shaun of the Dead. Uh, Area 51 referenced, obviously, the military base located in the southern portion of Nevada. Uh, despite taking place in California, all of the vehicles in the game feature New Jersey license plates. Uh, there's a frequent wrestling references to Calgary, Alberta which was formerly the home of one of the toughest wrestling training facilities, the Hart House. Uh, Destroy Stadium bears some resemblance to Yankee Stadium. So, like, the Yankee Stadium's famous facade is seen on the outfield walls. The trains and subway stations look very similar to New York's MTA subway division. Uh, Talbot and Weller, the guys who work for Sylvia, the names come from Mick Talbot and Paul Weller from Style Council. The building across the street from Beefhead has a large poster which displays No Me Toque Le Cojone Grasshopper, which is a parody of the Sex Pistols debut album, Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols. In addition, near the, there's a cosmetic store in Western Santa Destroy which is called Never Mind the Botox, which is another parody of it. Uh, the dark side mode attack in the galaxy is may be a reference to Anakin UK. Game sharing the title with the album of The Strangers. There's a poster also stating Whatever Happened to the Heroes, which is a lyric from that song. Uh, Shinobu's Katana, Three Rumb Girl Rumba's Sword, reference to the white song Three Girl Rumba. The Miami Bass shirt in Area 51 is a reference to a Miami-based rap group, the Two Live Crew. 
The theme song in Thunder Ryu Jim sounds very similar to Eye of the Tiger by Survivor and Master of Puppets by Metallica, plus with the No More Heroes song mixed in. There is obviously when, well, not obviously, but implied that Thunder Ryu has had sex with Travis on some occasions um, in the dialogue he has, which references the ancient practice of pederast in some Japanese samurai casts. The design of Thunder Ryu's blade DOS bears a resemblance to Shirasaya, a plain Japanese blade mount. Moai statues can be found throughout Santa Destroy. Uh, the game obviously has a lot of references to tigers. Um, the Mask of the Legendary Wrestler set, the tiger in the upper right hand corner, Sylvia's numerous go get and tiger eye of the tiger stuff and it's basically because Travis's Japanese name Torabisu roughly translates to tiger so that and also go get and tiger might reference Mary Jane Watson in Spider-Man comics there's also obviously lots of fourth wall breaks uh, the name for the King Tut shop in Santa Destroy is a reference to Tutankhamun this is all stuff that you're never gonna notice uh, the name for the Pirates Ninja shop this may be in the sequel, not sure. Um, is a reference to the internet meme of pirate who would win in a fight, pirates or ninjas. I believe we went through the people stuff. Video game wise, as we get, or we're about to get slaughtered by Henry's evil attack. Uh, the death screen, which you saw there, is has Zaka TV displayed on it. Um, it's a new station featured in two other Suda 51 titles, Michigan Report from Hell and Killer 7. Obviously there's the reference to Duke Nukem Forever, which is now incredibly outdated. That was just so wonderful. So wonderful of an instant kill attack. It's one of the best in the in gaming, I have to say. I feel bad for just blathering over it, but you get the gist. And now uh, we get the normal ending, but I will continue to just blather on with this stuff just to fill out until we get to the glorious rousing finale. It's finally over. So uh, behind Travis's armchair is a shelf containing many collectibles. There's an N64, also a cartridge of pure white giant Glastonbury. These fights don't work. Uh, cat Gene may be a reference to the stray cat Ryu Hazuki cares for in the Dreamcast game Shenmue. The Destroy Cannon is partly based on Hadouken. This is the glorious Staff Wars Episode 1 Star Wars reference. You can see in the visuals and the sound, it's just glorious. <laughs> There's seven references to Kill 7, so Bad Girl's Fridge and Destroy Stadium has a label reading Chiller 7, um, the bad girl being a slogan seen on one, one of Travis Bell's muscle shirts um, or something. Techniques taught to Travis by Randall Lovikov are named after the likenesses of the Smith Syndicate, and Erman Palmer, who is the assassin who breaks into Travis's motel room at the end attempting to kill him, is an homage to Emir Park Reiner, who is in Killer 7. I never knew that that guy had a name. Good grief. Then you've got the Lucha Libre masks, Master Smith. Then you've got the visor of Let's Shake, which is Virtual Boy, and gloves do resemble the Power Gloves, while Dr. Shake contains engines that refer to the PlayStation 3's cell microprocessor and the Xbox 360's Trinity engine. Then we went through, well I'm pretty sure we've already been through the Fire Pro Wrestling stuff. There's also three trading cards in the game of professional race wrestlers, the Flower, the Sun and the Rain. Um, also, a Japanese two-page print advertisement for the game featuring Sylvia Crystal sunbathing without a bikini top sporting the letters FSR, which are references to Flower, Sun and Rain, which is one of Suda51's previous productions. Then, the name of Thunder Ryu's Beam Katana 
DOS is a reference to the family of operating systems for IBM compatible PCs marketed between 1981 and 1995. And last but not least, in the gym when you're doing squats in a wrestling ring, uh, there's possibly a reference to beating the ringleader at squat competition in Final Fantasy VII, um, which is the whole thing where you need to gain a wig to disguise yourself to rescue Tifa. And, oh boy, we made it. And after the wonderful end of Staff Wars Episode 1, we get the ever-glorious, the virgin child, smiles, smiles or cries without saying anything. I won't sing it again because I am not quite that much of a saddo. But that is everything in No More Heroes, apart from the free fights, because I forgot to record that. But anyway, I hope you have all enjoyed watching this commentary of No More Heroes. It's been an absolute blast doing it, and I'm so glad I got to come to it after as many years as it has been. So. All I can say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that you join me in the next walkthrough, which will be beginning very soon. Ah, oh, see you all then.